If students want an overview of um, the book in one course, it still might, they still would very much enjoy Principles of Economics, right? Principles of Economics is the uh, the single course that we have available as an independent study course where you covered sort of the, the most important ideas in the book in one course. Um, other students um, who maybe they're homeschoolers or maybe they really want to spend a lot of time to just um, dig through the uh, thoroughly go through the whole textbook, then this series of courses would be for them, right? Right, yeah. So that the previous course was titled Principles of Economics. Don't get me wrong. I think that was a great course. I mean, the professor was phenomenal in my opinion. <laughs> so yeah, by all means, if, if people want to go look at that because they just they don't have the, the time to spend three courses, that's still there. And I think that's that's great for what we did. But the point is, as you, as you say, if if you really want to go through and, and, and basically it was there were a lot of material in the textbook. Let me put it to you this way. When I was writing the textbook, I was had this thought in my mind saying, what if this is the one book somebody reads on free market economics in his or her life, what needs to be in this book? And that was the criterion that I used as to what material to put in and what to exclude. And uh, and and so given that, it was almost causing me physical pain in the Principles of Economics Mises course where I just realized I, I just can't cover this. And I was hoping they would go on their own and do the reading. And so that's that's now the, the point of doing this three-part series is that to say, you know, instead of hoping and why don't we go through and carefully do it because there's so much in here that people need to know if they, they're being introduced to economics in particular. And I want to just make sure they, they catch all those important points of all the stuff that's in that textbook. Mm -hmm. um, now, in this textbook, um, you cover Austrian economics principles, but these are also principles that they would find in other economics courses, wouldn't they? Right. So it's a good uh, issue you're bringing up. We, we we didn't want Lessons for the Young Economist to be an explicitly Austrian book because then I was afraid uh, just you know general homeschoolers who tend to be sort of you know right wing or conservative and the and that's the way they might think of themselves and they might not. You know, it might sound like it was some obscure thing if they saw a textbook that was explicitly billed as this is Austrian economics. They might say, well, I don't even know what that means. And so that's why the lessons for the young economist per se is uh, just trying to be a, it's a it's a general free market in an introduction to free market economics. But of course, I think any Austrian reader would like everything that's in the book. It's not that there's anything non-Austrian in there. And that's that's partly too. It's you know the Milton Friedman's famous thing about oh there's not Austrian or this or that it's just good economics and bad economics and I agree and I think Austrian economics is good economics and that's why I'm an Austrian I don't go out of my way to do something I think is wrong so um, so everything in there is Austrian but we didn't try to you know make it that explicit we just you know I was billing it as this is free market economic analysis so the the difference though in terms of what we're going to be able to do now with these Mises Academy courses is I can. If there's a particular point in the textbook that we cover, I can now have the freedom since we're teaching it through the Mises Academy and I know the people who are signing up are going to be coming from that uh, background and I have that level of interest, I can fill in the details and talk about, you know, this is what Murray Rothbard had to say on this issue and so forth. So things that were just a little bit too much inside baseball to get into the textbook, I can, I can sort of give that flavor and explain this particularly Austrian contribution on some particular issue. So this won't be just a tutorial through the textbook. There'll be a lot of extra value that students will get from the lectures because they'll be getting a lot of distinctly Austrian uh, information and theory uh, through the lectures, right? Right. And I mean, that's, at least to me, that's kind of what the, the point of a lecture is that ideally, you know, this is how I conducted my classes at, at Hillsdale College where I taught for three years and then what I do with the online courses here is, yeah, the the lecture has to be standalone in the sense that I know some people are, especially if they're adults who are working, they just don't have time to do the reading and they just want to tune in and, that, and that's what they can afford to carve out of their schedule. And so the, the lecture does have to be able to stand alone, but I, the most value someone's going to get is if they do the reading first and then tune into the lecture. And so because of that, you know, I make the two dovetail each other that I'm not merely just basically reading from the textbook or giving a book report on lessons for the young economist, what I'm doing is giving a an independent lecture that is based on the same type of material. So so yeah, to answer your question, someone who just read the textbook, they're gonna get a lot more 
from these Mises Academy classes based on it. And in particular, they're going to get a lot of um, anecdotes and, and other sorts of things that Austrians have said on these topics to sort of give them a, a broader range of education on what the Austrian take is on these issues. And um, But there, there will be a lot of sort of tutorial aspects to the course. One of the most challenging things uh, about working through a textbook is to really get um, the message out of graphs and charts. And one of the things that I've really enjoyed in watching your previous uh, Mises Academy courses, especially when you're covering this book and, and when you're covering Man, Economy, and State, is that you walk the student through interpreting tables and charts. And so you have a, a cursor floating on the screen that all the students can see while they're watching the live broadcast or watching the video later, and you're circling different parts of the table and, and um, guiding the student's eye from one part to another and just holding their hand through it so they can really understand it. Um, is that something that you enjoy about uh, online teaching? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely, and that's and that's just come from my experience teaching in the in the actual physical classroom that I realized you can give students uh, reading to do, and there can be tables and things in there, and they can even have read it, and you just realize talking to them or like you give a quiz the next day with some of the cells in the table not filled in, and they don't know how to put them in, and you realize, oh man, these these they just don't get what the table's saying, and it's. It's, it's partly because you just, as the professor, you assume, well, they've been reading about this their whole lives. They know exactly what the context is here. And then you got to say, well, no, if this is the first time you've seen this thing, you don't know really what's going on. So, so yes, uh, that is, I think, one of the the things that – that's one of the functions of giving a lecture based on something that the student ideally has read before is that if there's something like that, you can walk through it and really make sure they understand, you know, how is this table working. And, and so that's why if it's the things that are in this book – since I wrote it, I put it in there because I thought they were important. So there are a few places where just to give a specific illustration, you know, things like comparative advantage and when does it make sense for somebody who is really good at two tasks to hire somebody who is inferior in the absolute sense, but yet it still is efficient, you know, to hire somebody. So the classic example of the, you know, the, the lawyer hiring the secretary to do some of his correspondence, even though he's a faster typist that that can make sense, or the doctor hiring nurses to take the patient's blood pressure before he meets with them, even though he's better at taking blood pressure than the nurses are, you know, things like that, where it helps to illustrate that concept with a specific numerical example. So yes, when we hit that part in the book and the lecture, I'll walk through that to make sure the students really get where those numbers are coming from and how do you read this table. Mm -hmm. So even Superman and Jimmy Olsen, that they, they have incentive to uh, divide their labor in exchange. Right, right. Thank you.